In the nucleic acid lecture series, we talked about the difference between DNA and RNA. It's important to understand those differences before you move on into protein synthesis. So I'm going to do a quick review, but if you want to know this in more detail, please revisit that video from the nucleic acid series. Remember that DNA is a strand of molecule just like RNA is, and that both have the sugar phosphate backbones tied together by phosphodiester bonds. Also, both are made of the same kind of elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphate. But the structure is going to be different in some ways. The nucleotide structure is the same. It's a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. But the sugar is going to be different. In RNA, the sugar is going to be ribose. And in DNA, it's deoxyribose. It's going to have one less oxygen in the carbon-2 of the sugar. Also, notice that although DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. And DNA will have every single gene in your body. It's huge, and it's packed into chromosomes. RNA is going to be small. It's going to have only a copy of one gene, and it's going to be a single-strand molecule that doesn't actually have the same kind of structure that DNA has in chromosomes. The bases are also have, going to be different. Both are going to have pyrimidines and purines, and the pyrimidines are the same for both. Both have A and G, adenine and guanine. But the purines are going to be slightly different. Both have cytosine, but in RNA, uracil replaces thymine, which is found in only in DNA. Finally, the function is also going to be different. DNA contains all your genetic information, all the genes in your body, and it's going to be involved in protein synthesis. And some part of the DNA also has structural roles, like the, the centromeres and the telomeres. And some of the DNA is also junk DNA. But in the RNA, every piece of RNA matters. And it's genetic information of one single gene to make a protein. It's also involved in protein synthesis, but in different ways. It will have structural roles, catalytic roles, and many other roles, as you will see, in, including regulation roles. And we'll talk about that at the end of this video lecture series. Now that we've covered the difference between DNA and RNA, let's talk about the different kinds of RNA. There are many kinds of RNA, but the three main kinds of RNA is going to be the messenger RNA, the ribosomal RNA, and the transfer RNA. Here you see a picture of the ribosomal RNA. It is a globular shaped RNA that has many domains. And as we learn about in terms of proteins, each domain will have a different kind of function. And the ribosomal RNA kind of serves both a structural and catalytic role within the ribosomes. It is a globular shape just like enzymes are. It will be anything between 100 and 3,000 nucleotide long. And it will be stable stable throughout history. It's actually a really good way to find out taxonomical differences between animals because this ribosomal RNA is the most stable gene in the history of the world. In fact, it's based on ribosomal RNA that we actually divided the kingdom Monera into now the major, into two types of bacteria and we restructured taxonomy into domains which now include archaea or the ancient bacteria, eubacteria which are the true bacteria and finally the eukaryotes. And you, there's actually a closer relationship between eukaryotes and ancient bacteria than actual eubacteria. And that's actually interesting. And we'll talk about that when we do taxonomy at the end of the year. Then you also have the transfer RNA. And that role of the transfer RNA is to actually carry amino acids to the ribosomes where the protein synthesis is going to be taking place and to help the ribosomes interpret what's the correct amino acid to put in the sequence next. The shape of it is going to be a clover leaf shape if you actually look at it two-dimensionally. And if you look at it three-dimensionally, it will look like a person with an arched back. And you see that over here, right? It's look like the person is kind of doing some sort of exercise that's becoming arch. It's like a 90 degree angle kind of thing. And it's kind of like you get the clover leaf with the standard arms like that and then you fold it sideways. All right. And that's kind of how it is. The RNA of the transfer RNA will be the shortest of them all, between 75 and 80 nucleotides only. And will have basically several different regions to actually do its job. It has four sides. Two sides are going to be involved in attachment to the ribosomes, and that's why you have these corners. One side is going to be actually involved in attaching to the messenger RNA to help decode the message to make sure that the proper amino acid is put in place, and the other side is going to be where the amino acid is going to be attaching, which is the amino acid end of the uh, transfer RNA. And you notice that the codon, which helps to determine which amino acid needs to be placed, will have a matching anticodon on the transfer RNA. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. Another interesting thing about the transfer RNA is that even though it has a specific amino acid that it carries, several different anticodons can, can stand for the same amino acid in a phenomenon that we call the wobble. And we'll talk about that in more detail when we come back and talk about uh, the genetic code.
Now, you also have the messenger RNA, which is a long strand that actually contains a copy of the code of the DNA, the codes for the protein of interest, and it carries the transcribed code to the cytoplasm where it will merge with the ribosome to actually make the protein synthesis happen. It's going to be a linear strand because that's the best way to carry a message, and it will be between 500 and 1,000 base pairs long depending on the size of the protein. The RNA message is basically containing just one gene, and for every three nucleotide bases, that's called a codon, it means one amino acid. So if you have a protein that's 300 amino acids long, you're going to need a, a, a message RNA that is at least 900 nucleotides long, or three times as much. It's very important, by the way, to start reading from the right place. Otherwise, you're going to screw out the protein altogether. If you read it backwards, it's not going to be the same protein. And that goes back to the idea of reading frame, which we'll talk about again when we do the genetic code later in this lecture, video lecture series. So these three types of RNA work as a factory, and each of them have a job. First, the messenger RNA picks up the message from the nucleus, carries to the cytoplasm, where the ribosomal RNA in conjunction with proteins will serve as a catalyst to the process of protein synthesis, which will require the transfer RNA to bring the correct amino acids paired up with the, with the correct sequence of, the, of messenger RNA to make sure that the amino acids are laid down in the correct order. And that's kind of how the protein synthesis process works. 